The Holy Word for Morning Revival Crystallization Study of 1 and 2 Kings Week 2 Day 1 Morning Nourishment 1 Kings 18 18, He said, I have not troubled Israel, but you, have, in that you have forsaken the commandments of Jehovah and have gone after the balls. Philippians. 3-7-8, What things were gains to me, I have counted as loss on account of Christ, I also count all things to be loss on account of the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, and count them as refuse that I may gain Christ. In every age the Lord has special things that He wants to accomplish. He has His own recoveries and His own works to do. The particular recovery and work that He does in one age is the ministry of that age. It is God's mercy that a person can see and come into contact with the ministry of that age. Yet it is altogether a different thing for a man to take up the courage to forsake the past ministry, yet whether or not one can set aside his past ministry is entirely up to God's mercy. Today's reading. Elijah's ministry was an anti-testimony. When all Israel was worshipping idols, Elijah told them that the idols they worshipped were false gods, and only Jehovah was the true God. Elijah, as an anti-testimony, told them that idolatry is a sin that offends God. Elijah, was the most prominent and the most representative of the prophets before the captivity, and he was an overcomer. When the people worshipped idols, he stood fast and did not worship them, thus, he was an anti-testimony. At that time, under the leading of the king of Israel, the people forsook God and went far away from him, thus, God raised up Elijah to stand before the king and the people as an anti-testimony. At that time the people worshipped Baal, but Elijah told them to worship Jehovah instead. When the people said that all was peaceful and well, he told them that there would be no rain for three and a half years. He was a living testimony before the king and the people, and his conduct was contrary to that of the people. There were many prophets of Baal during the time of Ahab, and they called themselves prophets of God. Although there were seven thousand hidden ones who did not worship Baal at that time, only Elijah openly bore an anti-testimony and did not fear death. Elijah alone stood before the king, the people, and the four hundred fifty prophets of Baal without any fear. Elijah represents the principle of not caring for one's own life in order to maintain God's testimony. When Elijah stood up to testify, the whole earth was against him, he alone testified for God. In this matter Elijah was special. Throughout the ages, among God's people, some have been this kind of overcomer. These matters in the Old Testament typify matters of the Church in the New Testament. When the Church is desolate and the majority of the believers forsake God's testimony, God raises up overcomers to be an anti-testimony. Today the Church needs overcomers according to this principle, that is, ones who do not care for their own life. Every overcomer and witness for God has the feeling that he alone is standing, although God had hidden seven thousand who did not worship Baal, Elijah's feeling was that he alone was standing, to be an overcomer, one cannot fear the consequences, hold on to the past, or care for the attitudes of others, he must care only for God's will. Elijah did not care for his life but stood as an anti-testimony, maintained God's testimony, and told the people that they should follow Jehovah instead of Baal, the principle of the overcomers that he represented in this period is that of rising up to be an anti-testimony when God's people forsake his testimony.